guys and welcome back to another of my YouTube videos. If you're new here, you're very welcome. My name's Laura and in this video I'm going to be going into depth on the UCAT calculator. In this video I want to cover all of the different things you'll need to know before sitting the UCAT about the UCAT calculator. Things like the keyboard shortcut, how to use it, what the functions of the calculator are and what things it doesn't actually have and you should be aware of before you sit the test. I hope you find these top tips that I wish I had known before I sat the UCAT useful and you can get started with the UCAT tests for the quantitative reasoning and decision making sections of the UCAT. In this video, I hope to give you some top tips that will help you boost your scores in the quantitative reasoning and decision making sections of the UCAT, as well as get you a bit more confident with using the calculator and give you a better understanding of ways that you will boost your scores and speed up your timings on answering questions and inputting data into this calculator. So firstly, what does the UCAT calculator look like and how do you even access it? Well, here is the UCAT calculator and I'll just go through quickly all of the different buttons and functions that are on it. So as with a normal calculator, you have all the normal numbers, an equal sign, addition, subtraction, division, and multiplication sign. You also have a square root sign and a percentage sign. And the red button down in the corner is the clear sign or the on sign so that you can clear all of your data that's been previously in it and start again. If you can't quite make out what the calculator functions are of this calculator up here, go check out the description below where I've linked the actual UCAT calculator so you can get used to using it and see how all the functions and things work. I put it in the description down below, so do go check it out. So if you can see on this calculator, there are the M plus and M minus buttons, and these buttons are real time savers when it comes to the UCAT calculator. These buttons, like on an ordinary calculator, will store the answer that you've just worked out on the calculator and then if you use M+, will add it to whatever value you've got at the minute or if you use M-, minus, will subtract whatever value you're using from the number on the calculator. This is really, really useful and will save so many valuable seconds when you're typing in things to the calculator so that you're not retyping values that are maybe very long or very accurate. If you can make out from this calculator, there's also the MRC button and that just means memory recall. Again, as like with a normal calculator, this will just store the number that you wish to store in your calculator so that you can come back to it later on in another step of your calculation. These are really, really useful functions to use and be aware of for the UCAT calculator to save you valuable seconds and to help you score highly in the quantitative reasoning and decision making sections of the UCAT. If you're finding it hard to make out what it says on the calculator up here, do check out the description below, which has the link to the actual UCAT calculator so that you can go and muck about with it and work out all the different functions and how you want to use the UCAT calculator. So the UCAT calculator can be used in two different ways and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the two different ways now. So the first way is using the mouse and this is usually the most common way that students will use the UCAT calculator. They'll simply drag the mouse around the screen, they'll click on the calculator and then they'll select the numbers that they wish to input and then they'll hit the equals button. However, this can be really ineffective and I'll go into that in a little bit more detail soon. So the second way to use the calculator for the UCAT is to use it via the keyboard. You simply press the number locks button on your keyboard and then use the keypad at the side of the keyboard to input all the numbers that you wish to, as well as use the plus, minus, multiplications and division signs as well. This is a much more time effective way of using the calculator and it can really save you valuable seconds for each question in the UCAT. Remember, if you want to use this method, make sure you're using a desktop style computer. This will mimic the real exam technique because it's no point getting used to it on a laptop or something that is really, really different in layout and size to when you actually go sit the test because it will really, really stress you out and you won't really be able to naturally find the keys that you're looking for and just input the data quickly. 
So my top tip when using the keyboard is to get used to using the full size keyboard keypad to get all the numbers in the right location and start getting very natural movements between inputting all the numbers and symbols when using the calculator. So in my personal opinion, I believe that using the keyboard is a lot quicker than using the mouse just because you're not dragging it around and clicking things and you're able to mimic sort of how you would type in on a normal calculator. However, if you're not used to that way of doing it, do not panic as actually for me, I didn't use the keyboard shortcuts until very close to the exam and it was quite unnatural if that's not something you've been practicing or preparing with already. So if you're using the mouse, that is perfectly fine, but I do believe that using the keyboard is a quicker way of doing it. So if you haven't started preparing for the UCAT and you're only starting to work out what ways you might think of doing this, I would suggest using the keyboard version much more than using the mouse. It is totally personal preference, so do whatever suits you and do bear, bear in mind that the calculator is a vital part of the UCAT and should not be overlooked when you're preparing. So do try and get used to using the online calculator as soon as possible. First of all, how do you even access the UCAT calculator? So if you're using the mouse, you'll simply drag it to the icon that will be located at the top of the screen and you'll select it and the calculator will appear. If you choose to use the keyboard shortcuts, you'll be doing it slightly differently. Instead of dragging the mouse, you'll simply select the control and the C button on the keyboard and this will bring the calculator right up onto your screen and you'll be able to start typing in the numbers. So here are my top tips for using the UCAT calculator effectively and tips that I wish I had known and been able to implement before sitting the UCAT exam. So my first tip is to get used to the using the on-screen calculator as soon as possible. It will surprise you how different it really is from your normal everyday calculator. It is very limited with its functions and very basic. It doesn't have all of the fancy add-ons and extras and it really will be totally different using it on screen in comparison to typing the numbers in on your everyday calculator. So my second top tip is to avoid relying heavily on the calculator. I know this video is all about the UCAT calculator and it may seem a little strange that I'm saying to avoid using it as much as possible but it will slow you down and eat up valuable seconds that you just don't have in the UCAS. However, in saying that, it is super useful to be able to have in the test and I couldn't have done it without it. And being able to follow some of these top tips and implement them in your preparation for the UCAT will really, really speed up how effective you are at using the calculator and therefore not waste as many seconds as it would if you weren't following these top tips and were using the calculator ineffectively. So another top tip to speed up your use of the calculator is if a step in a calculation is relatively simple, don't waste time typing it into the calculator. Simply use your mental maths and then take it on to the next step if required. If you're not that confident with your mental maths ability and you feel like you would like to brush up on it, I suggest going and downloading some apps onto your phone. There are some great free apps that I'll put in the description below that I used to just speed up my ability to feel confident about my mental maths. You can use simple quizzes every couple of days to just give you a bit more of a guide on the mental maths that you're strongest at and some of the mental maths that you might need to work on further. Simple things like being able to multiply and divide large numbers is essential in the UCAT and you don't always want to have to rely on typing this into the calculator. So I definitely recommend brushing up on some GCSE level mental maths. Another top tip when using the UCAT calculator is to remember that you are the one inputting the data. So if you slip up and put in the wrong number by accident, you will get a wrong answer out at the end. So be careful when you're inputting the data. Don't spend a long time doing it, but do be careful with what you're putting in because it can really, really negatively affect your results. If an answer seems really impossible, it probably is. Do trust your gut instinct on a lot of answers because quite often you'll have hit the wrong button by accident just out of pure panic and rushing through the questions. 
So another top tip would be try to eliminate answers that you think are impossible before even jumping onto the calculator. With the multiple choice answers, you'll see that there's about four on each question. And that means that you could instantly have read the question, looked at some of the data and then realized that the options are already kind of ruled out. This is a really good way of them being able to, if you're stuck, work backwards on a question to see if the answer that you may select is correct or not. Another top tip is don't be afraid to redo calculations. Yes, it will take a couple more seconds, but if you're almost at an answer and all you need to do is try something once more, don't be afraid to give it a couple more seconds and try it again. You'll gain more marks from doing this than just simply guessing a random answer and moving on to the next question. So if you can, try and round numbers. This will make it so much easier that when putting it into the calculator. There's no point typing in decimal numbers that are like 0 0.23857 when you could really just put in a rounded version of that. It will really, really save you time because you're not then typing in so many numbers. And it will also mean that you'll get roughly the answer that you're looking for. As I've mentioned previously, it's a really good idea to get using the keyboard as soon as possible if that's something that you're wanting to do. Try and mimic the test environment and use the large size keyboard on a desktop because that's the thing that they'll use in the real exam. So I hope you found some of those tips useful and maybe some of those tips you didn't know already. If you've got any questions, please drop a comment down below and I'd love to get back in touch. If you found this useful, please give it a like down below. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button to keep up to date with all my new videos and content that I'll be uploading to help you get through medical school application process and get you high scores in your UCAT and interviews. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye bye.